Jesus himself said, An hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and truth. For such people the Father seeks to be his worshipers. God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. And in another verse he says, It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and are life. It is the spirit, he says, who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. And he also says, You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life, and it is these that bear witness of me. And you are unwilling to come to me that you may have life. And he says over here, The Father who sent me, he has borne witness or testified of him. And he said, You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his form. So he said it was the scriptures that testify of him, because his Father testified concerning him. The one who believes in the Son of God has the testimony in himself. The one who does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed in the testimony that God gave concerning his son. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, that I will punish all who are circumcised and yet uncircumcised, Egypt, Judah, Edom, the sons of Ammon, Moab, and all those inhabiting the desert who clip the hair on their temples. For all the nations are uncircumcised, and all the house of Israel are uncircumcised of heart, because this circumcision comes from God. It is caused by God. It is not according to what we will or what we want or desire. Beware of the dogs. Beware of the evil workers. Beware of the false circumcision, for we are the true circumcision who worship in the Spirit of God and glory in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh. He said, we are the true circumcision. This circumcision, again, Paul says, is that which is of the heart by the Spirit, not by the letter. And his praise is not from men, but from God. As Jesus also warned us when he said, Woe to you when all men speak well of you. Moreover, it says, The Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your descendants to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul in order that you may live. It says the Lord God will circumcise your heart. It is caused by God. And it says, you will love the Lord your God with all your heart. We love God as it's written because he first loved us. For those who are according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who are according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For the mind set on the flesh is death, but the mind set on the Spirit is life and peace. And these words are Spirit and they are life. Because the mind set on the flesh is hostile toward God, for it does not subject itself to the law of God, for it is not even able to do so. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. However, he says, you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. But if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. However, you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, your heart being spiritually circumcised and born again. We speak wisdom among those who are mature, a wisdom, however, not of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are passing away. But we speak God's wisdom in a mystery the hidden wisdom which God predestined before the ages to our glory, the wisdom which none of the rulers of this age has understood, for if they had understood it, 
they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But just as it is written, Things which eye has not seen, and ear has not heard, and which have not entered the heart of man, all that God has prepared for those who love him. For to us God revealed them through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things freely given to us by God, which things we also speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the Spirit, combining spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. But the natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually appraised. We have renounced the things hidden because of shame, not walking in craftiness or adulterating the word of God, but by the manifestation of truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, in whose case the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving, that they may not see the light of the gospel. Therefore, as obedient children, do not be conformed to the former lust which were yours in your ignorance. But like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves in all your behavior, because it was written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. And if you address as Father the one who impartially judges according to each man's work, conduct yourselves in fear during the time of your stay upon the earth, knowing that you were not redeemed with perishable things like silver or gold from the vain conversations inherited from your forefathers, but with precious blood as of a lamb, unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ. For he was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but has appeared in these last times for the sake of you, who through him are believers in God, God who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God, so that your faith and hope are in God, the God again who raised Jesus from the dead. This Jesus who was foreknown before the foundation of the world, as all the prophets were. For he said to Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you and predestined you to be a prophet to the nations. As obedient children, he says, since you have in obedience to the truth purified your souls for a sincere love of the brethren, fervently love one another from the heart. For you have been born again, not of seed which is perishable, but imperishable. That is, through the living and abiding word of God. This is the word of God. We are washed and renewed by the Holy Spirit through these pages, through the living and abiding Word of God. Born again, not of seed which is perishable, but imperishable. And as it's written again, the promises were spoken to Abraham and his seed. He does not say unto seeds referring to many, but rather to one. And to your seed, that is, Christ. The promises were only made to the seed of Christ. He does not say seeds, referring to many as in plural, but only one. And it says that he who has received his testimony has set a seal to this that God is true. Because God testified concerning his son. He who has received his testimony has set a seal to this that God is true. His testimony is the spirit of prophecy. 
their prophets. And Jesus said, Has it not been written in your law? I said, You are gods. That's plural, more than one. Gods. If he called them gods to whom the word of God came and the scriptures cannot be broken, do you say of him whom the Father sanctified and sent into the world? Do you see where he told you he was made holy before he was sent into the world? And then he says, you are blasphemy because I said, I am the son of God. He said, I am the son of God, not God. These individuals to whom the word of God comes to are gods. Children of the most high. I said, you are gods. All of you are children of the most high. And what did the Lord say through the prophet Isaiah? I and the children whom the Lord has given me are for signs and wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts. As many as received him, to whom the word came to, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even those who believe in his name, who were not born of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God, not by your own will or want or desire, but by the will of God. As it says, by his doing you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. By God's doing we are in Christ Jesus who is wisdom from God and righteousness, the very righteousness we need to have that exceeds that of the Pharisees and scribes as if we want to enter the kingdom of heaven. It comes from Christ. If you do not have the spirit, you don't have the righteousness. And it's because of God that we are in Christ. These are the redeemed Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, the sacrificial Lamb sent by God. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son. I thank my God and Father through Christ for the redemption he has given me. When Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things to come, he entered through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this creation, and not through the blood of goats and calves, but through his own blood, he entered the holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. Who redeemed him but his father and his God? For if the blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling those who have been defiled sanctify for the cleansing of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, to cleanse your conscience from dead works, to serve the living God. It is by the Father sacrificing his Son, the Son's sacrifice, his life, his blood that they are redeemed. They receive his spirit, and by his spirit, they are caused to serve the living God. As Jesus said, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Unless one is born of water, for Jesus washed and cleansed the church by the water of the word. And by the word, they receive the spirit. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. And for this reason, I remind you to kindle afresh the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but of power, love, and discipline. 
and do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, or of me his prisoner, for Paul was his bond slave. But join with me in suffering for the gospel according to the power of God, who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose, and grace which was granted us in Christ Jesus from all eternity but now has been revealed by the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Do not be ashamed of his testimony, which is the spirit of prophecy. And Paul told us through the scriptures that a prophet offers edification to the church. And Peter said, we must obey God rather than men. We are not concerned with offending men, but rather pleasing God. As Paul also said, am I seeking to please men? If I were seeking to please men, I would not be a bondservant of Christ. We're not concerned about pleasing men, but obeying God. The God of our fathers, who raised up Jesus, whom you have put to death by hanging him on a cross. He is the one whom God exalted to his right hand as a prince and a savior to grant repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. To grant repentance to Israel. For they are not all Israel who are descended from Israel, neither are they all children because they are Abraham's descendants? But, it says, through Isaac, your descendants will be called. That is, it is not the children of the flesh who are the children of God, but the children of the promise are regarded as descendants. See how great a love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called children of God, gods, and such we are. For this reason, the world does not know us, because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not appeared as yet what we shall be. We know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him just as he is. And as Christ said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. You will obey. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may be with you forever. That is, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it does not behold him or know him. But you know him, because he abides with you and will be in you. For thus says the Lord, This is the covenant which I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them, and on their heart I will write it, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. For I will take you from the nations, gather you, from all the lands and bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. Moreover, he says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you, and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And you will be careful to observe my ordinances. He will cause you to walk in his statutes and ordinances. He said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. It does not depend on the man who wills or the man who runs or on your desire, 
but on God who has mercy. As the scriptures say to Pharaoh, for this very purpose I raised you up to demonstrate my power in you, and that my name might be proclaimed throughout the whole earth. So then, he has mercy on whom he desires, and he hardens whom he desires. He hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he would not let Moses go. So that God could strike him with all the plagues. So that God's power would be proclaimed throughout the whole earth. He hardened Pharaoh. God will have mercy on whom he chooses. As it's written, blessed is the man whom God does not impute sin. And they're covered up. How blessed is the one whom thou dost choose and cause to approach thee to dwell in thy courts. We will be satisfied with the goodness of thy house, thy holy temple. We know that God does not dwell in temples made by man's hands. He dwells in his people. Those whom he chose and caused to approach him These were born again. They received the spirit of Christ, the circumcision of the heart that was caused by God. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? Who are these individuals, folks? They're holy men and women, those that were foreknown and predestined before the foundation of the earth. They hold the testimony, which is the spirit of prophecy. They're prophets. God dwells in these individuals. They're prophets and saints. They hold the testimony. They've been born again, spiritually circumcised and are one spirit with him. They are God's children of the Most High. They are his personal possessions. As it says, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. He called us out of darkness and circumcised our hearts and wrote his laws and his commandments on our hearts and minds. A, cho a chosen race, excuse me, a royal priesthood. We know the Bible. We abide in the word and the word abides in us and through it, we receive the Spirit and have access to our Father. Through Him, we have access to the God and Father. He is our mediator. For there is one God and one mediator between men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave Himself by the will of His God and Father to redeem us. I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God, which was given you in Christ Jesus, which was given you in Christ Jesus, that in everything you were enriched in him, in all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony concerning Christ was confirmed in you. To the law and to the testimony, if they do not speak according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. There is no spirit in them if they cannot confess the testimony. So that you are not lacking in any gift, awaiting eagerly the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. I received the revelation. I shared it with you. He shall also confirm you to the end, blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, through whom you were called into fellowship with his Son, 
Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, It is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am about to act, but for my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations where you went. No one gives thanks to God anymore. It's always Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Even though we thank God through our Lord Christ Jesus. It is not for your sake, he said, that I am about to act, but for my holy name. He saved us, not on the basis of deeds which we have done in righteousness, but according to his mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewing by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out upon us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we might be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a trustworthy statement. And concerning these things, I want you to speak confidently so that those who have believed God may be careful to engage in good deeds. These things are good and profitable for men. And this you know, my beloved brethren. Let everyone be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For the anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of God. Therefore, putting aside all filthiness and all that remains of wickedness, in humility, receive the word implanted, which is able to save your souls. As I showed you, it is how we are born again and washed and renewed. Prove yourselves doers of the word and not merely hearers who delude themselves. Prove yourselves doers of the word and not merely hearers who delude themselves. What did Paul say? If anyone thinks himself to be something when he's nothing, he deceives himself. It starts with receiving the word implanted with humility. With humility. 